Are you in the process of doing your J-1 waiver on your own? Don't worry, we have your back. I used to be a J-1 teacher with 212 Euro from the Philippines. I was successfully given my J-1 waiver through exceptional hardship with my U.S. citizen spouse and now I am a green card holder. In this video, we are going to talk about the importance of having your monthly budget and how you're gonna do that. So let's dive in and let the journey begin. Hello everyone, my name is Emery. Welcome to Powerful Couple Journey, where we show you our random activities here in the United States of America. In today's video, we are going to talk about the importance of having a monthly budget for your strong evidence in filing for your DS-335 and your Form I-612, which is the waiver. With our case, we receive an RFE, which is Request for Evidence. When we have that, we felt so down because we might got denied with our J-1 waiver. But don't lose hope. What you're gonna do is you're gonna sit down with your spouse, think about the strategies, especially the information that was being asked by the USCIS on that particular RFE letter. In our case, because this is a case-to-case -case basis, we have had to show the USCIS officer and the waiver review division that we are going to have a financial hardship if I will be imposed with a 212E rule home residency requirement. So my husband created a template which is available in powerfulcoupljourney.com that way you will know how we started with our monthly budget. We have the details like our joint bank account. We also have our joint filing of our taxes. And we also have the different kinds of brackets when it comes to the expenses that I am spending and the expenses that my husband is contributing to our necessities each month. You have to make sure that there is really a bank account statement. That way, the USCIS officer or the adjudicating officer will know you are having the right claim and you are having a strong argument about financial hardship. The monthly budget doesn't only entails your individual needs and expenses. It is also your way of showing the commingling when it comes to you and your spouse working together and showing that you live together in the same place. I know some J1 teachers, they are having a hard time living with their spouse because their job is in another state while their husband or their U.S. citizen spouse lives in another state. In that case, you have to ask for your J-1 visa sponsor if you can move to your husband's location or your husband can relocate to your place. That way you could stay together. It's really hard to argue if both of you are in different state. It's the commingling that you are going to be showing to the USCIS officer or the adjudicating officer. So that makes a very hard decision if both of you are not in the same state. In our case, we both live in Central Florida and we managed to have our finances straight together. I am single prior to getting married. My husband is also single prior to getting married and we decided to have our joint bank account right after he asked for my hand. And right after that, we went to our bank the name is Space Coast Credit Union here in Central Florida and we have our joint bank account during that time. With my name, it's still in my maiden name before and right after we got married, we changed that maiden name to my married name which is my husband's last name. So bank account is really important, your bank statement is really important and don't forget to have the strategies on how to do your monthly budget as your evidence 
for your J1 waiver process with your form I612 and your DS3035. You can avail the sample template that we have and create your own monthly budget that suits your needs and your priorities in order for you to show the adjudicating officer or the USCIS officer that there is really a financial hardship once you are imposed with the J1 212E rule home residency requirement. I am a J1 teacher from the Philippines. Now, I am a green card holder willing to help and willing to share my ideas on how we did it through DIY. And don't forget, we have our J1 waiver helping hands group where we share our different ideas on how to get a J1 waiver through exceptional hardship with our U.S. citizen spouse, U.S. citizen child, or you can also do persecution waiver. It all depends on you and what your needs are. We are here to help. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe this video. That way we can share a lot of ideas to other J1 teachers or J1 visa holders that are needing help when it comes to J1 waiver. Thank you so much and you have a great day.